Good evening. Welcome to HealthQuest. I'm Deborah Arneson, your host for the evening, and tonight we have just an exceptional number of shows going on here, and we're talking about kids and health, and we have with us once again Bonnie Minsky, who is a renowned nutritionist working with children in the northern suburbs of Chicago, and she is kind of my guru in many ways. I mean, Bonnie just always has, you know, if I've had a question in the past when I was starting out, I'd call her and she'd guide me and lead me to the right waters, so to speak. So she's just a wealth of knowledge and I know you have a crazy busy schedule and you're busy writing books and you're doing newsletters and you have your web page and you're helping moms and kids all over, you know, the north side of Chicago and the Chicagoland area. So thanks for taking time to be here. You're welcome. I'm thrilled to be here as always. Well, Bonnie, you're just precious to give up your time and your energy. <laughs> I really appreciate it. Well, we're going to talk first of all about raising healthy kids today. So if you have kids, stay tuned because you know what? This is the woman you need to hear from. <laughs> so we're going to talk about Bonnie's book. She's written a number of books actually for children. We'll get into that in a little bit. And we're going to talk about raising your kids in a healthful way. So they are in fact good performers. They're vibrant, you know, jumping around like little jumping beans. Not too hyper, but energy, <laughs> you know, is high, etc. So Tell us about the book that you wrote, Nutrition in a Nutshell. Nutrition in a Nutshell is really for anyone, not just for parents. It's just a very good primer, I think, of what the really optimum things to do nutritionally are, and it really gives you a how-to, so it makes it easy to do. The book that I'm writing now is specifically on raising healthy children. It's called Our Children's Health, and that will probably be finished by the end of the year, published by Vital Publishing. Wonderful. So I'm really excited, and it sort of keeps me on track and up to date with everything that's going on, because right. when you write a book, you have to do all the you research. You better be current. Right. Exactly. And we want to be, I mean, just up to the minute. So the Nutrition in a Nutshell is a book that someone would pick up who knows basically little or nothing right. about nutrition, and they could learn about basically the ABCs, you know, exactly. proteins, fats, carbohydrates, right. and what they do. And in a very, very easy format, right. and so they could actually take the grocery list, go to the grocery store, follow the menus, and it's easy to do. But it's good for the whole family, um, including the children. And we start with the parents. Always start with the parents. It's a great book. I read through it. It's, it's wonderful. Yes. Well, thank you. And now you also have another book that I want to kind of show off here. Can I do this? I'm sure. doing it too soon. But oh, that's okay. This is the greatest the book. junk food junkies. This is for the children. We want to counteract all that awful Saturday morning cartoon advertising. So it's a great book, and it can be accessed by the website, www.fantastifoods. Okay. Fantastic. So foods. it's a fabulous, Cute. fabulous book, and the kids can read it through the website. Attack of the Junk Food Junkies. It's adorable because right. it's written in rhyme. Yes, right? it is, and it's got fables. It's got color. Um, this looks like Jim Carrey right it here. Does. This is very I cute. Think. So it just it makes it really exciting to learn about nutrition without being preached to. So, and that's what we like to do. It's a very, very very delicate balance of doing the right thing and not preaching. But the thing that, that just, I mean, it really makes me sad. I started teaching in Cabrini Green over 30 years ago. And then I went into guidance and counseling for schools and for families. I went back into nutrition because I couldn't work with children and get any success with their emotional and learning problems until we got their nutritional problems controlled. Mm -hmm. And today, across the board throughout America, we're seeing children is in as bad health as we saw kids in the poorest areas in the poorest ghettos of Chicago. And they live in opulence. All over. Mm -hmm. They're living on junk food, literally living on junk food. And I have two grandchildren and one on the way. And Everything they're doing that you would consider normal, good eating mm -hmm. is the exception. It's not the rule. Right. It's really, really sad. And I think that's why I felt I had to write this book, because we have to do something about it. Right. Everything is getting worse. Asthma now, 61% increase in asthma, double the deaths. One out of five children is obese. One out of five children is on Ritalin because they're mm -hmm. hyperactive. They're lining up in the school, you know, to see the nurse to get Ritalin at lunchtime. Well, you had a, a quote that you created on our last show. You said it's no longer reading, writing, and arithmetic. It's reading, writing, and Ritalin. Right. It which is. Which is horrifying. It is. It's like Ritalin robots. They're going oh. around. And do you know that the National Institutes of Mental Health 
prove that children do not do better in school on Ritalin. They might sit there like a zombie and not bother the teacher, That's about but it. they don't do any better academically. And parents don't even realize all the side effects. I mean, kids can commit suicide on Ritalin. They don't grow as well. They have a lot of digestive problems, mm -hmm. and on and on and on, mm -hmm. and yet... It goes and goes and goes. Right. So why do you purport, and from your experience, what have you seen is the primary cause of these kids being, other than junk food, which right. they start eating way too young as far as I'm concerned, are they malnourished when they're intrauterine? Is, are the parents well, not it's, as well Right. Too? It starts from the beginning, and often, I did my internship at the March of Dimes Birth Defects Foundation, so we saw very serious problems during pregnancy. We have parents taking in a lot of monosodium glutamate, NutraSweet, all kinds of food additives. And although 13 years ago when I interned at the March of Dimes, we sent literature all over the country telling parents that, and doctors, that folic acid was critical, but in a supplement form. Now, to date, they're finally doing it. But Since at the same... 1994 only, right. and that news came out in the 70s. Right, and all these children had spina bifida and other neural tube defects because of it. Then, we told them at the same time, magnesium is critical to prevent gestational diabetes, eclampsia of pregnancy, postpartum depression, to make delivery easier. To date, I would say there's a handful of doctors throughout the country that routinely recommend magnesium although it's the most efficient nutrient in the American diet. Right. And what does magnesium do? Calms you down. Right. Nature's Valium. So kids aren't getting so it either. So the mother doesn't have enough. She delivers a baby that doesn't have enough. And then it just escalates. Mm -hmm. And then you give a child food that are completely right. devoid of nutrients. Right. And, and the other thing that I issue. see today that I never witnessed when my children were growing up is that kids today are living on carbos. Mm -hmm. Nobody's getting protein. Mm -hmm. How can they grow? How can they regulate their blood sugar if they're just getting carbos? The protein gives them four to five hours of energy, carb, half hour, up, down, mm -hmm. they're on a roller coaster all day. Right. And I see such seriously malnourished children. In fact, I have the most amazing story. Um, a psychotherapist mother called me and said, I don't know what to do. My three-year-old has been put on liquid Prozac for, oh. s for a psychotic episode. Oh, ridiculous. And I said, well, what's wrong? The child's gnawing on wood everywhere, you know, table legs, uh, window sills. My child's gnawing on wood. And I said, well, that's pica. That's a non-food item problem. Right. It's usually caused by mineral deficiencies. Right. So I said, well, what did the complete blood screen show that tests for iron deficiency and a lot of other different subtle uh, mineral deficiencies? She said, what CBC? One of the best children's hospitals in the country did not run a CBC. You're kidding. We ran the CBC. The child was extremely anemic, corrected the anemia, no longer psychotic. But they didn't even think. That's no. the thing. Why would you put your children on Ritalin? Why would you do all of these drug therapies when you don't look at the physical side first? Mm -hmm. If you look at the physical and you've done everything there, a lot of kids have nutritional deficiencies, allergies, yeast overgrowth, food right. intolerances like lactose or gluten. You correct those. And then if there's still a problem, then you consider behavior modification, medication, right. or whatever. Mm -hmm. But they never even mention that. And one of the biggest groups that's supposedly a self-help group for hyper kids called CHAD, mm -hmm. they're funded by the company that makes Ritalin. And they tell you diet has nothing <laughs> to do with this. So that's it's like horrifying. the, uh, what that's is it, horrifying. the fox watching the hen house? Yeah, right. That's really sick. So, so you better be a savvy consumer. As Absolutely. a parent, you must be very proactive in preventing these types of right. situations occurring in right. your child's life. And one life. of the good things is, now that we have a lot of internet websites, parents are becoming a lot more educated medically. And if a parent isn't given information, they can't ask questions. But if they see on a website or somewhere else or in a book, you know what, diet might have something to do with my child's problems, 
then they're going to go into the doctor armed with information. If you're armed with information, you right. can always move in the right direction. And if your doctor won't listen to you, you find Next. a doctor that will. Right. And exactly. there are a lot of them out there today that may not know a lot about this, but they'll at least say, sure, look at the nutritional factors. Um, look at that. Your child does look a little bit sickly. Mm -hmm. Let's run some blood tests, see what's going on. Well, it's interesting, too, because I went to um, a friend's three-year-old birth, four-year-old birthday party. Oh, boy. Can I tell you, out of like 15 kids there, there was one that had pink in her cheeks. The rest <gasps> looked like little Dawn of the Dead victims. They were oh. all white as a ghost with the dark circles. circles. And yeah. just like little zombies. Well, and again, we either have Garbage. children who are, who are extremely skinny and just look so sickly, or we'll have the extremely obese kids. Right. When I started teaching, you know, so many years ago, we would have maybe two kids in a classroom that were obese. Today, it's a quarter of the class, half of the class. It's, it's just unbelievable. It's all the carbs. They're either too skinny, too heavy. How, how many kids look normal? And the increase normal? in diabetes must be terribly oh, on the rise. Diabetes, type 2 diabetes among young teenagers has risen dramatically. 11 to 13 year old kids are getting type 2 diabetes now. Hmm. And it's just no protein, carbs, 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 yes. and no not even healthy carbs. And no healthy fatty acids either. No, no, that's really another refined. thing. That's another thing that in Europe, in baby formulas, essential fatty acids are put in baby formulas. It has proven that kids' IQs will be at least 10 to 15 points higher with essential fatty acids. The only um, formula in this country, um, RCF carbo-free formula from Ross, is the only one today mm -hmm. that does not, I mean, that does have the essential fatty acids. Really? And you add your own carbo to it, and it's for failure to thrive infants. The normal infants don't give it to them, just the failure to thrive. Really? So, I mean, What's I always... What's the source? What's the base in it? Uh, safflower. It is safflower. Yeah, but I always advocate... Um, breastfeeding if you can, sure. do your own essential fatty acids, make sure the parents have them. Um, I also like to start kids on something like salmon at early ages. It's amazing that if you start kids mm -hmm. with something at, the, at an early age, even sardines, things you would never think of eating, it, they of love the it. They love it. Fat and the nutrients. Right, and in. kids love fat mm -hmm. until their taste buds get skewed with all of this Sugar. junk food. Right. I had I was doing a lecture actually last week and one of the mother's children are autistic and and she said you know I've got a problem with my child and I, I said is your baby you know is your infant or toddler craving fats I said does he eat butter by the handfuls and she's like oh can't get enough I'm like well he right. knows more than you do exactly he needs fatty acids terribly exactly and if you start them early. Those are the kinds of foods they like. And also, there have been research studies that have proven that if you don't give kids very much sugar until they're two years old, they don't even crave it. Mm. And my grandson, who's now almost three, is a perfect example of mm. this. He's the picture of health. And they had a huge party on Valentine's Day at his little nursery school. And he has his little special, real low sugar cookies. And they had all these cupcakes. And the teacher thought he was going to start crying if he didn't get a cupcake. And he looked at him. He says, no, I don't want that. That's yuck. Good. And he ate his cookies. And he ate two cookies. He was done. The He's teacher satisfied. said, don't you want more cookies? <gasps> no, I'm satisfied. Because his good instincts are there. Kids have better instincts sure. than we do. Parents say, I'd rather give my kid anything than not feed them. Mm -hmm. They're better off not feeding them because if they get hungry enough, they'll eat it. They'll eat the real food. <laughs> when you tell that to parents, so they look horror stricken. Right. When I tell that to this woman today, and she just looked at me like right. I needed to be shot. No, I said, I have never seen a kid go more than 24 right. hours without eating anything. Right. And if you say, here, here's your protein first, and you hide all the junk food in the house, mm -hmm. say, I'm sorry, I haven't gone to the store. This is all we've got. <laughs> They'll start eating it, yes. you know. But if the parent has the stricken